everybody. I'm Kelly. And I'm Elizabeth. And we're back with a new theme for today, extinct animals. When a species goes extinct, it means that all of them have died out. Scientists say that out of all the animal species ever, almost 99% of them are extinct. Considering how many animals are still living on Earth, it's crazy to think that there are so many more species that we've never even seen. Hmm. Before a species is extinct, we say it's endangered, which just means it's in danger of going extinct. You've probably heard of endangered animals before. For example, in Ocean Week, we talked about sea turtles and how they are endangered. Later, we'll talk more about endangered species and how we can help. For now, we're going to focus on animals that have already gone extinct. Let's start by going to Joe, who's going to talk about my favorite animal, the dinosaur. Dinosaurs have been talked about for a long time. You guys have probably seen some of, the, of their bones in museums, just like this little guy. Now, how much do you really know about dinosaurs? Do you know how they lived, or when they lived for that matter? Well, I'm going to share just a few facts with you about dinosaurs. Now, dinosaurs are a mixed group of reptiles, which first appeared about 243 million years ago. Now, dinosaurs aren't around anymore. They went extinct about 200 million years ago. Except for birds, who are descendants of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs came in many different sizes and they looked very different. Some were able to walk on two legs and others were able to walk on four. Some even had the ability to switch back and forth from walking on two legs to walking on four. Now, way back, many dinosaurs were fairly large. Many actually reached heights of about 60 feet. Some dinosaurs had modifications to their skeletons like bony armor or sharp spines. This triceratops had a bony frill around the back of its head for defensive purposes. Now, as I said earlier, birds are dinosaur descendants, and that is true, except for they are a lot smaller now than they were back way back when. Back then, the first bird dinosaurs were called pterodactyls. They weren't that large, but their wings got to be about three and a half feet long. That's each wing. Now, we don't know a lot about the behavior of dinosaurs, except what they ate and how they ate. We can guess how they socialize through how birds socialize now. They are believed to have lived in herds or groups of the same type of dinosaur. This was so that they could protect each other if they were attacked by other dinosaurs like, Velocir like Velociraptors. That's all the facts that I, ha I was able to dig up on some dinosaurs. I hope you guys learned something new. Now, El Elizabeth and Kelly will be right back with something truly chilling. Thanks, Joe. Even though dinosaurs are probably the most famous extinct species, there are tons of others too. If you've ever seen the movie Ice Age, you saw a lot of animal species that are now extinct. And if you haven't seen Ice Age, please watch it immediately because it's hilarious. <laughs> the Ice Age actually caused many species to go extinct because they couldn't survive in the extreme cold or they couldn't find the food they needed. These animals lived millions of years ago in prehistoric times, though some of them didn't go extinct until more recently, tens of thousands of years ago. Let's take a look at some of the animals you might have found back then. One of the main characters in the movie, Manny, is a woolly mammoth. Woolly mammoths are amazing creatures. They're kind of like elephants, but much more hairy. Woolly mammoths also have much smaller ears than elephants. Remember how we talked about animal adaptations? Well, their small ears are an adaptation. Their ears are closer to their head and help keep them warm so they can survive in super cold climates. They also had super long tusks, almost 15 feet long. They use them to fight off predators and to dig in the snow. Another animal from Ice Age you might think of is Diego the saber-toothed tiger. Even though it's called a tiger, the saber-toothed tiger is much different than the tigers we now know. Their teeth could grow up to 11 inches long, and they like to hunt in packs. Even though Diego is pretty cool, you probably don't want to be friends with a saber-toothed tiger. You know who I do want to be friends with? Sid the Sloth. Yeah, Sid is pretty awesome. One interesting thing about Sid is that even though sloths are still around today, Sid is from a different species that has gone extinct. Sid is a ground sloth, and they've all gone extinct. The so sloths we have today are different, and they mostly live in trees. <clears throat> it's interesting you say that, Elizabeth, because I could swear I just saw Sid the Sloth hanging around outside our studio. 
Well, that's weird. We should go check it out. If it's really him, maybe he'll come on the show. All right, we're going to go look into this, so let's take a quick break. Ever see or find a fossil and wonder what it was like in the past? Well, I have just a thing for you. The fossil real liver. You just take a fossil and you swipe the real liver, real liver over it and boom, you have a prehistoric creature. It's just that easy. Just be careful not to do this over a dinosaur fossil uh, or they can get dangerous. Call 1-800-FOSSIL-REAL-LIVER to get yours today. Hi guys, look who decided to come say hi. Hey Sid, how are you? I am good. Surprise, you guys caught me. You are much faster than those rhinos that chase me for candy lions. Oh, sounds scary. So Sid, what's it like being a sloth? Well, the candy lions taste amazing. Oh, and you get to meet big cool friends like Manny the Mammoth. Oh, and it's nice to just do my thing. Well, that just sounds dandy. <laughs> What was it like starring in Ice Age? It was some hard work. Oh, and it was so much traveling. And the worst part is they made us walk barefoot. But it was nice to meet some cool friends. Well, that sounds awesome. But I am sorry about your feet. Or whatever they are. Anyway, Sid, do you like the heat of Utah? Oh, I'm not a big fan. But the tan lines are nice. Good to know. One last question. What advice would you give the kids about life? Make good friends. Choose the right people to be around. Always look on the positive side and never take dandelion fields for granted. Thank you so much, Sid. That was um, truly inspiring. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We hope to see how you're doing in the future. Now to Joe for some cool facts. We all know what a shark is, but did you know that there was a bigger shark that lived about 3 million years ago? A relative of the great white shark called megalodons, which just means big tooth. But don't worry, they're extinct now so they can't harm you. The jaws of the megalodon were a lot blunter and a lot wider than the great white shark. And the fins would have been a lot thicker than regular sharks as well. Now, in their jaws they had a lot of teeth. In fact, they had about 276 in their mouth, with each tooth being slightly slanted. The megalodons probably ate large prey like whales, seals, and sea turtles. Maybe they were the reason why ocean animals formed communities. Now, these guys are really awesome, so you may be thinking, how come they aren't around anymore? Well, I can explain that. Scientists believe that the reason megalodons went extinct is because the ocean was cooling down. The world was about to enter an ice age. Because of the megalodon lost their habitats and the nurseries for the ba their babies, they also didn't have enough to eat because the fish they ate could not survive in colder waters. Just like the megalodons, my time here is done. Plus, that's all the information that I have for you guys. If you have some interesting facts about megalodons, share them in the comment box below. Next up is Elizabeth Kelly talking about birds. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Elizabeth, did you know that birds are actually related to dinosaurs? Wow, that's cool. Kind of weird to think we have tiny dinosaurs flying around. I think you mean kind of awesome. Eh, true. So then what did birds look like back in prehistoric times when dinosaurs lived? Great question. They looked a lot different, that's for sure. Let's take a look at some of the extinct bird species that lived back then. I've heard of the giant moa. Can we talk about that one? Sure. A giant moa was from New Zealand and they were huge. The females could grow almost 12 feet tall. Wow, so does that mean they couldn't fly? Yep, they're flightless birds. They eventually went extinct, and scientists think it's due to human hunting. Bummer. What's another species from back then? Well, there's the Archaeoteryx. Scientists used to think it was the first ever bird, but now they say it was more of a transition or blend between dinosaurs and birds. It's pretty crazy looking. <laughs> yep. Like I said earlier, they were much different than the birds we see now. If you really want to see a crazy looking bird, take a look at the Gastornis. Whoa! <laughs> the Gastornis was big too, about six feet tall. 
Their bodies were basically like a T-Rex. Powerful legs and tiny arms. Cool. Wait, what about the dodo bird? I remember them from the Ice Age movie, so were they prehistoric too? They sure were. Dodo birds are actually related to pigeons. They were nesting birds and they couldn't fly. They were super easy for humans to hunt, which is why they went extinct so quickly. Hmm, interesting. It's crazy how different birds were back then. Agreed. Well, it's time for a quick break, but we'll be back after this to talk about endangered animals and how we can help. Hey guys, since it has been super hot outside, I wanted to talk to you about sunscreen and why it is important. We all need some time in the sun, but if you guys remember, vitamin D comes from the sun and the more vitamin D you have, the happier you can feel. When we spend time in the sun, our bodies make vitamin D, which helps the body absorb calcium for stronger, healthier bones. It only takes a little time in the sun for most people to get the vitamin D that they need. But being in the sun for too long can cause a sunburn, and sunburns are the worst. Too many sunburns can even give you wrinkles. You don't want to look like a seven-year-old when you're only a teenager. You probably wonder how a sunburn happens. Well, I'll tell you. The sun sends light to the earth, and a part of that light consists of invisible rays that we call UV rays. When these rays reach the skin, they can cause your skin to tan, but being in these rays for too long without sunscreen is what causes a sunburn. When you apply sunscreen, it applies a layer of protection to your skin. You know, how a king wears armor to protect himself? Sunscreen is your armor from the sun. So never ever forget to put your armor on before you go outside to play, or even if you're just outside taking a walk. Make sure you have your armor on so you don't end up with wrinkles. Anyway guys, that's all I have for today, but don't forget to wear your sunscreen because it's so important. Anyway, don't forget to smile. Bye! Everyone should wear sunscreen every day, no matter who they are. But if you are in direct sunlight for a long time, for example, fishing, on the beach, swimming, etc., you especially need it. So, this is ultra powerful sunscreen for you! This is called Ultra Screen. Ultra Screen is so powerful, you could survive on the sun. It is SPF 1 million. All you have to do is apply for 30 seconds at a time. It is that easy. Head down to your local convenience store and get your Ultra Screen today. Have you ever wanted to see a dinosaur in real life? Well, come on down to Jurassic Park. We have the ultimate dino destination. Now, we used to have real life dinosaurs, but uh, a couple years ago they got loose and really hurt some people. So now we just have toy dinosaurs. Ah! Uh -uh. This is a disappearing dinosaur. <laughs> he just disappeared in my hands. Uh, I can feel him, but uh, okay. Um, uh, we have other toy dinosaurs too, like the T-Rex, <laughs> Velociraptor, Ankylosaurus, and many more. Those ones don't disappear though, <laughs> and they are just as cute as the real ones, so it's worth the price. Come on down to Dinoville, Quebec to get yours today. Welcome back guys. To finish out today's show, we are going to talk about endangered animals. Endangered animals are animals that are likely to become extinct sometime soon. This can happen for lots of different reasons. Deforestation, human hunting, pollution, and more. There are currently over 16,000 endangered species, which includes both plants and animals. That is really sad. What are some animals that are endangered? The Asian elephant, the chimpanzee, the blue whale, and even tigers. Those animals are so cool. That is sad that they have become endangered. I agree. Well, how can we help? Well, one of the best ways we can help is by being informed. So learn about which species are endangered in your area. The more you know, the more you can help. Good point. Is there anything we can do to help protect their habitats? Sure. One thing that kids can do is to be respectful when you're out in nature. Don't leave trash on the ground, stay on the trails, and if you do see wildlife, don't bother them. Those sound like good ideas. I think it's also important that we recycle and buy reusable products so that all the garbage doesn't hurt the animals. I agree, Elizabeth. Well, that is all the time we have for today. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to comment down below which animal you thought was the coolest from today's episode. And visit the link outs to do art with Teresa and make a birdhouse with Karen. We will see you guys tomorrow for our final episode of Animal Week. Bye. Bye.